Hey guys, welcome back to another Planet Mithril Paint, and today we'll be showing you how to paint Gamling and the Royal Standard of Rohan. Faithful protector and companion to King Theoden, this loyal, bold hero followed his king anywhere and everywhere, from Helm's Deep to Pelennor Fields in service of his duty. Without further delay, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Apply a base coat to the face and hands with Bugman's Glow. Layer over now with a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. Once the wash is dried, relay with the previous Bugman's Cadian mix, leaving the right limb flesh shade towing in the deepest recesses around the nose, eye sockets, lips, and separating out each finger. Layer over again now with Cadian flesh tone. Now we want to accentuate some of the more haggard features on Gambling and define his brow and slight bags under his eyes, as well as further defining the features we defined in the previous stage. Highlight now with a mix of Cadian Flesh Tone and Pallid Witch Flesh. We want to push the facial details further by keeping our highlight application tighter and finer than we have previously. Proper application will bring a great deal of characterization to this wizened Rohirrim's face. You can also define the knuckles and fingertips with a dot highlight here too. Finally, add more pallid witch flesh to the mix for the final extreme edge highlight on the more prominent areas of facial detail. The tip of the nose, edges of the brow, uppermost parts of the cheeks and the very edges and tips of the fingertips and knuckles. We want to capture that characteristic sandy blonde look to the hair that is custom amongst pretty much all Rohiru. To start off Gambling's hair and beard, apply a base coat with XV88. This is slightly richer in tone and will complement the pastel highlights we'll be running through later on. Layer over all the hair and beard with a mix of XV88 and Zemesi Desert. The Zemesi helps to lift the overall tone and gives us a really vibrant, natural yellow hue to build the blonde up from in the highlight stages.
Once the wash is dried, layer over with the previous mix, blocking out the largest areas and clumps of hair. Make sure you're leaving the Agrax Rose shade showing in the deepest recesses around the brow, beard surround and between the billowing hairs up against the banner to create a sense of movement. Apply a highlight now with a mix of XV88, some messy desert and pallid witch flesh. Now we're going to be bringing the tone up in a muted fashion to help create the sandy, rustic blonde look from the people of Rohan. Now you want to focus on painstakingly separating out individual hairs across his scalp and beard to create a natural sense of movement and realistic hair. Finally, apply an extreme edge highlight by adding more pallid witch flesh to the mix and further accentuating the flow of hair and beard by keeping your highlights as tight and fine as you possibly can. We're going to be painting the horse hair on his helm at this stage, but we want to create some subtle differentiation so it doesn't look exactly the same as Gambling's own hair. After all, he ain't a horse. Base coat the helmet's horse hair with Steel Legion Drab. Apply an all over layer with a mix of Steel Legion Drab and Pallid Witch Flesh. We're missing out the addition of some messy desert here so we don't end up with as vibrant a hue as we did for Gambling's own hair. Once the wash is dried, layer over it again with the previous mix, leaving the wash showing in the recesses between the hair. Add more pallid witch flesh to the mix for the final extreme edge highlight. Keep your paint application in long, unbroken lines to keep the flow of the hair looking as natural as possible. Base coat the scale mail, inner workings of the shin greaves and van braces, collar and any other silver details with bed belcher. Once the wash is dried, dot highlight the scale mail tips with runefang steel and apply an extreme edge highlight to the rest of the flatter areas with the same paint, leaving the non-oil showing in the recesses to create a sense of wear and tear.
Carefully pick out the trim on all the edges of the armour plating and scale mail, as well as the cloak brooches, helmet banding, sword hilt and any other gold details with rune or brass. Once the wash is dried, highlight all these areas with Sycorax bronze. The more muted, beaten look will complement the feel of the Rohirrim very well. Base coat all the belts, straps, stirrups and all the embossed details over the shin and arm guards with dry bark. Try and be as careful as you can not to bleed this onto the armour plating whilst painting the arm and shin plates. Apply an edge highlight to all the leather and brown areas with Gorthor Brown. Base coat the inner fabric areas under the arms by the wrists and gambling's legs with a mix of corn red and rhinoxide. The rhinox tones the vibrancy of the corn down nicely to create a more of a rich burgundy base than the vibrant red hue it would otherwise be. Layer now by adding some Evil Sun Scarlet to the mix. This lifts the rich base tone of the base coat naturally and brings a splash of vibrancy now whilst also maintaining the realistic richness we want to keep with our reds. Once the wash is dried, highlight the inner fabrics by adding more evil suns to the previous mix, leaving the caraberg crimson showing in the recesses to create a sense of movement within the material.
Now onto the most recognisable feature of a Rohan Royal Guard, the rich, deep green cloak, customary to members of their station. Base coat the entire cloak with a mix of Caliban green and Rhinox hide. Again, the Rhinox hide helps to accentuate the rich base we want to try and create. To get smooth, even coverage, you may want to apply this in a few thin down coats. Apply an all over layer now by adding some warpstone glow to the original Caliban Rhinox base mix. Be careful here as adding too much warpstone will make the cloak far too bright and vibrant. We don't want gamming to be luminous, he won't be avoiding many Uruks at Helmsteep like that. Once the wash is dried, relay with the previous mix, leaving the BL tan green showing in the deepest recesses and folds of the cloak. Now we're going to layer over again by adding a small amount of Zemesi Desert to the overall mixture. We'll be working with this base mixture through the entire cloak process in order to keep consistency through all the tones we've been applying and building them up progressively as we go along. The Zemesi lifts the tone of the green mix enough without it becoming too overbearing as it would with more warpstone being added here. Further define the flow of material by starting to focus on blocking out the larger folds and areas of cloth. Highlight now by adding more Zemesi Desert to the mix. Focus now on more of the upper and outer folds of material to help reinforce the sense of natural flow and material as he gallops into battle. You can apply as many interim highlight stages as you wish before the final highlight, progressively adding more Zemesi as you go, but by the time you're ready for the final highlight, your mix should be comprised of no more than approximately 50% Zemesi Desert. and snarsnick green to the mix now for the final edge highlight. Concentrate on the very edges of cloak as well as the absolute apex of the folds and curls of the material just to further reinforce the flow of movement through the fabric.
Paint the scabbard, boots and trousers with a 50-50 mix of Abaddon Black and Storm Vermin Fur. Once the wash is dried, apply a highlight to all these areas with pure storm vermin fur. Carefully pick out the grip of the sword hilt with Doomball Brown. Apply an edge highlight down the pommel with Toscal Fur. The banner is undoubtedly the most daunting part of this gambling sculpt, and while ours is by no means perfect, we feel it gives a really effective result you'll be proud to show off on the tabletop. Start by base coating the banner itself with a mix of Caliban Green and Dryer Bark. As with the hair, we want to create a subtle differentiation between the banner itself and Gambling's cloak. The Dryer Bark here helps to tone the Caliban Green down slightly and doesn't give too much richness as the material we wanted for the cloak. Apply it all over layer now by adding some messy desert to the original mix. As with the cloak, you may want to apply this in a few thinner layers to obtain a smooth, even finish. Once the wash is dried, relay with the previous mix, leaving the wash showing in the deepest recesses. The banner can be challenging, some of the folds are really well defined, and other areas are more flat in texture. All we can say here is take your time to define where you want to create texture with your highlights and layers. Add more of messy desert to the mix for the first highlight stage. Push your defined layers further now by starting to focus on the more prominent areas of fabric. Again, as with the cloak, you can apply as many interim highlights adding more of messy as you go here in order to achieve a smooth transition between the darker and lighter tones.
Now apply final edge highlight by adding its narcinic green to the overall mixture and focus again on the upper and outermost fold of the banner where the light will be hitting most prominently. This also ties the banner in nicely with the cloak which creates a subtle degree of uniformity across these two large surface areas on the model. Paint a band around the entire outside of the banner with etching grey. This will provide a slight barrier between the bulk of the green and the patterning we're going to be applying next. This won't be uniform all the way around as this flag is super billowy, so don't pan it too much if it doesn't look straight all the way around. With our guideline in place, layer over the eshing grey band and the loops affixed to the banner pole with corn red. This will be a solid, rich red to base the highlights off for the patterning. Apply a fine edge highlight now around the inner and outer of the red banding with Evil Sun Scarlet.
Now this next stage is extremely delicate and needs time taken to achieve a good looking result. With a very fine brush, carefully edge highlight around the outside of all the red with Sycorax bronze to create the gilded frame for the Royal Standard of Rohan. Once this is done, you can carefully dot highlight in the centre just to provide a little bit of extra texture to the flag outside decoration. Now for what is undoubtedly the most daunting part of the model, the Royal Standard Horse print on the flag. We use Corax White for this as the base coat as it covers nicely and doesn't need too many coats to get a smooth finish. There are a few ways you can tackle this. You can trace in the outline of the entire horse and then fill in carefully afterwards, or as we did, with a reference picture to hand and constantly in your face, you can block in every individual element as you progress through the entire horse. Neither way is perfect, and neither is our own horse design, but this is the way it worked for us. The key important elements to keep in your head are, do not rush. The moment you rush or get frustrated is the moment the design starts to suffer. If you find yourself struggling, take a five minute break and come back to it with a fresh head. The design itself is constructed with a lot of fairly simple individual shapes, so it's important to make sure the blocking between them and the spacing is correct. The flag itself is so billowy that one or two little blemishes won't hurt the design too much overall. Once you're happy with the design on one side, all you have to do is repeat it on the other side, but make sure both horses are facing the same direction. Now to make the horse design pop that little bit more, carefully edge highlight around the outside with Ceramite White, being careful not to bleed into the spacings you've left between the individual components of the horse itself. Now that's the hardest bit done. Hooray! Carefully paint the banner pole with dry bark. A 
apply highlights in long random vertical streaks with Gawthor Brown down the length of the banner pole to create a wood grain effect. The tablet was base coated with Doom Ball Brown. Once the wash is dry, layer over with a mix of Doongle Brown and Tusk Pulfit. Finally, apply a pure edge highlight with Tusk Warfare. Pick out any metals and the horse's faceplate with lead belcher. Once the wash is dry, carefully edge highlight all these areas with Runefang steel. And there we have it. An ordeal and certainly a challenge, but Gamling, Royal Standard of Rohan, is ready to stand aside as king, following him to whatever end.